Hello everybody! Let's have a look at the closing 7-0 run that put away the game, which featured contributions up and down the lineup. The Warriors had a 6 point lead a minute ago, but then gave up 3 straight turnovers that were pretty bad and just coughed up the lead completely. So Steve Kirk called a timeout, Steph Curry's organizing the play, here he's motioning that Toscano Anderson has to go post up. So there's a signal that JTA should be posting up and then he's pointing at Draymond saying that the ball should rotate here and then JTA should cut through and then eventually the ball will find him. So there's the pass across. This is subtle but GP2 is going to set a quick screen to bump so that JTA can get post position. In the Warriors three-man split there's always someone who dives to the basket someone who pops out and takes a pin-in screen. So Steph is going to pop out, of course. Draymond's going to set the screen, and Otto Porter Jr. is going to cut. The postman is waiting to see if the cutter is open or if Steph is open. So here comes a split cut. Otto Porter Jr. cuts, but this is really well played by Memphis. This defender is just going to stay with Otto Porter Jr. Draymond here is about to nail Dylan Brooks while Steph Curry pops free. So this defender will switch out nicely. So Memphis guards this really well and no one is going to be open. JTA, showing a lot of independence, realizes no one is going to be open on this side, and here he is posting up the Anthony Melton who's 6'2", Juan Toscano Anderson is 6'6", so basketball logic says that this is a mismatch and our guy Juanito should be able to just post this guy up and score, but it takes a lot of guts to be an undrafted guy who's going to look off three basketball veterans and instead just try to solo this in crunch time after the Warriors have completely been falling apart. But I think that is the kind of basketball system that Steve Kerr has been trying to build and that Steph Curry has supported. This is the dream, strength and numbers that anybody on the court can make a play like this. But Juan just makes a quick back in move and he feels that Melton is not guarding him very tightly, so he makes this beautiful spin move around him. Melton ends up reaching for the ball and missing, and so JTA will have a reverse layup. Here's another angle of this nice post by JTA. To be fair to DeAnthony Melton here, it's really rare for this post passer to make a post move. Though so when JTA does a spin move, you can see that it completely takes Melton by surprise. Like he doesn't even move for a split second. Goes for the quick reach because he knows he's beaten. And nice layup. Here's the Warriors switching defense. John Morant getting a screen up high. That is a great screen. You can see it just really clonks Gary Payton the second. So Draymond now will switch over to Morant. Ja is expecting Draymond to come to him and GP2 to stay with him. So he dishes. Draymond closing out hard to Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to attack the closeout and get by Draymond. In the meantime, this Grizzly is going to cut through, which should make his man follow him, which should give Jaron Jackson Jr. a free roll to the basket. Here's the cutter, and he's picked up by JTA, but JTA does something subtly great, and he just lets the cutter go through, and he just trusts that Otto Porter Jr. is going to pick him up so that JTA can back up Draymond just in case JJJ gets past Dre. JTA just stays here as a backup. This cutter goes through, so it's really important now that Otto Porter Jr. pick him up, otherwise he'll be free under the basket for a dunk. Really nice rotation by JTA just to stay there. Vertical contest straight up. Aaron Jackson Jr. kind of plows into him, and then notice subtly that Otto Porter Jr got in the way to cut off any pass to Desmond Bain. Isn't it dangerous to have two defenders on the ball? I would say yes, but it's also dangerous to give some up a layup and Gary Payton the second is zoning these two men in case the ball ends up swinging around. But in this case, the fates are with the Warriors. They get a little lucky roll, great defense. Okay, we've seen this so many times in this dynasty run. Games in doubt, put Draymond and Steph on the right wing over here. Draymond setting a bit of a screen, but the Grizzlies, they're just gonna try to trap Steph. No messing around, commit to the trap. Steph with a quick little outlet to Draymond. Now this is a four on three. Someone's gonna be open if Draymond goes fast. 
Draymond makes an interesting read of this defense. This man rotates to Draymond. Bane over here is seeming to prevent any pass that goes directly to the corner. Though in theory, Draymond could send it to Otto Porter Jr. But Bane is also in position to rotate to Otto Porter Jr. And what is John Morant doing? He seems to be loading up, ready to jump up to block any pass that Draymond sends. In the meantime, Juan Toscano Anderson cutting baseline. John Morant elevates and Draymond throws an interesting little pass around the right side of Melton, the JTA. And JTA is here in crunch time having to make a decision. And I'm just so happy for JTA because he had a little bit of a rough game with quite a few turnovers, but he really came through in the last two minutes. Now somehow the entire defense is collapsing on JTA. Three people rotating to him. So he's going to find Gary Payton II in the corner. Gary Payton the second in the post-game interview said uh, below the break uh, coach tells me if I if I get it below the break just shoot it so uh, no hesitation no thought about it uh, anything below the break uh, I just let it fly break. The break is the break here of the three-point arc so this whole area and this whole area here is below the break basically he's a better shooter from these sides where it's a closer shot above the break it's at the maximum distance he's completely open lets it fly DB2 gets back on defense instead of celebrating. Ja trying to attack him, going with raw speed. Nice stunt in by JTA to discourage this drive. And then he's going to recover out to his man. This looks like a pick and roll happening here, which would then put Otto Porter switching over to Ja Morant. GP2 does something interesting guarding Aaron Jackson Jr. He pretty much has two choices. One is he can try to front, but there's so much space behind Aaron Jackson Jr. that if he just fronts, then Josh should be able to lob it over his head, maybe even for a straight up alley-oop. And all the help is too far away. Draymond can't get there, Steph can't get there. So GP2 makes the call that he's just gonna have to play straight up post defense. So he gets behind Aaron Jackson with a kind of elegant little twirl. And now, GP2 is just hugging Jaron Jackson for dear life. Here, I think Ja is thinking, I could just throw it to Jaron Jackson, but that's a tricky pass, and who knows what Jaron Jackson's going to do. Instead, I'm going to use him as a screen on my defender. So I'm just going to drive this way and drive my defender right into Jaron Jackson Jr. And it's going to be very tricky for GP2 to rotate to me because he's busy bear cub hugging JJJ goes around. Otto Porter though doing a really nice job navigating that screen, staying with Ja Morant. Oof, he just tosses it up. Let's go and let's God. God says, not today. Good rebound from Otto Porter Jr. He's been a great rebounder all year, fighting hard on the boards. Not the kind of glamour work, but it wins ball games. Steph ended up killing a lot of the clock and then gets it back from Draymond with five on the shot clock. Steph tries to go by Brooks and then go for the Steph back. Brooks plays this beautifully, stepping back with him and then staying with him on the step back and challenging, I think, without bumping Steph. He did go for the shot fake, and so Steph has no choice. This is actually a very clutch miss by Steph because he just shot puts it with one hand with a defender about to poke his eyeballs out. And if he doesn't hit the rim, then this will be a shot clock violation. Memphis automatically gets the ball. So can he shot put the ball drifting to the side and hit the rim? The answer is yes. He didn't call bank, but it still hits the rim. And now we have one two, three Grizzlies around here. And did I mention that Otto Porter Jr. was a rebounding machine this year? Ah, oh, what a reach. Reaches all the way back to just grab this ball with his tippy pinky. And holds on to it. That is huge. And Dylan Brooks, who had played such good defense on the play, look at this. He looks like a Greek sculpture called Despair. Memphis is still trapping Steph. Two gut to him. On an offensive rebound, the shot clock only resets to 14, so Steph is in some trouble here. There's only eight. Trap is coming. The usual move is Draymond does a short roll and Steph throws it over to him. Ja Morant trying to do something clever here. He tries to shoot the gap and intercept the pass. Here he comes, but instead of passing Steph, I believe he saw Morant coming up and says, all right, if I can turn the corner on this guy, then this is going to be a man advantage. Steph just goes around, 
I like this interior screen by Otto Porter Jr. This defender was guarding Otto Porter Jr. But now he says, what? You're bodying me? No, I'm bodying you. And he turns this into a screen of the defender. So the defender cannot rotate to help on Steph. So Steph just waltzes in with a nice soft bank shot. And that's ball game. Let's see how the Warriors bench reacted. There's the kick out to Gary Payton, the seconds, corner three. Nice smooth stroke. And look at the bench. They, uh, I'm gonna admit this is not showing the most confidence in GP2. Belitsa is in surrender Cobra formation. Jonathan Kaminga is hiding behind Kevon Looney, holding his arm. Hold me, tiny dancer. But once it goes through, people coming through. Let's check out the celebrations here. First, we've got Kaminga here. He's swinging the ball from side to side saying, did you see JTA when he drove and swung the ball to the side and then passed it? I like that respect. And we've got Moses Moody with the OK three. That's good. Jeff Doughton pulling in more of a European three. He's got the thumb and then two fingers with two fingers down. I think that's acceptable as three. We accept this. Judges, yeah, that's all right. This is another traditional OK three. We like that, excellent. Moody with the traditional OK three. Wait a second. Nemanja Bielica, what is going on here? This is a one, two. That does not, we cannot count that as three. Are we going for like three fingers down? No, that just would be wacky. Nemanja, we're gonna have to send you down to the G League to practice your three-point celebrations. 